Yo, Nappy Heads, Nappy Head Millie here. Um, I know I haven't done a video in three days. Um, to be honest with you, I've been kind of down. I wouldn't say depressed, but I honestly haven't been wanting to do anything. And been trying to keep to myself working on my mental. My, I ain't gonna say my fucking physical. I'm fat as fuck. But <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. But it gave me a video ad idea to do today. Um, we're going to talk about five songs that when I'm down, when I'm losing hope, when I'm feeling some type of way that I listen to, to, you know, get back in good spirits. Um, like, share, subscribe, you know, the usual. I will probably be adding one of these songs to the end, end title screen because I haven't done one in a while. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this video started. All right, so this is five songs that I personally feel as though they have major impact on my mind state. So these all aren't going to be good. No, they're not all going to have good memories to them, but they're what I listen to to cope because I'm a loner at the end of the fucking day. Yes, I have friends, but I'm still a loner. I don't talk to people like I talk to you guys on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? I more so go through my emotions through music and art. Okay, so let's kick it. Number five is going to be Once in Edition by J. Cole. That's on his KOD album, so his latest album. Um, why do I listen to this song? Because I can actually understand where he's coming from when he talks about the addiction that his mother had. Um, my moms, I don't really talk personally about my real moms. No disrespect, I love her to death, but I try to keep her personal business out, but... With his mother dealing with drugs and my mama dealing with, you know, alcoholism, I understand where he comes from. As a person that he looked at college and said college was an escape from the situation. For me, it was the military. I be 95% uh, of the Americans lying to you that say I joined the military to serve my country. Fuck no. I joined the military to run away from my situation that I was at home. You know, that I was in that home. And that's not a fucking lie. That's not to say I didn't enjoy the military. It's just the truth. You know, I got tired of seeing my mom's the way she was. I got tired of my family being the way that they were. And in the end, if I'm being honest, I think that decision was a selfish decision on my part. Because at the end of the day, you know, what if I would have said something else? Just as J. Cole said, what would have happened if I didn't run and try to actually help the situation? You know what I'm saying? Now... I'm not saying it's beyond help, but, you know, that's, it's up to my moms to do what she's going to do. I, I, I got hope for my moms. I know she's going to change. I know she's strong. If I'm as strong-willed as her, I know she's going to fucking change. So, it is what it is. But that is one of the songs. When I get into one of those moves where, you know, I'm mad at my mom, I go and listen to that song. And I'm like, damn, you know, I got to understand you know, I got to try and see from the other side, too, sometimes. So, that's my number five. Let's go ahead to number four. Number four is going to be one of my newer favorite artists. Um, This artist is really coming up, and if he keeps working and improving his style, I think he'll probably be one of the better artists that came out of our generation. That's Saba. It's going to be um Saba Logout, and that's on his most current album. Um... Saba, oh, that song, Log Out. <laughs> um, why well, I love that song so much? Because it came at a time where I was super into social media. Like I was one of those Twitter finger ass people that was in social media arguing with everybody for no fucking reason. Like, get me, give me this. I hate people that tells you stuff with no information applied to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I tell y'all a story. I give y'all the backstory. I give y'all the names of the backstory. I give you the people that you can go and look up. The um, you know, say what you gotta say. And I hate on social media people spewing bullshit <laughs> and have no merit. And when you check them about their merit, they trying to affiliate you with liberal or conservative. The shit's fucking stupid. But anyway, um, that song really is about you know. Behind closed doors, no, behind closed doors, yeah, you can look at somebody's life and think it's better or it's great, or you could think things are the way they are, but behind closed doors, when you log out, them people are probably just as depressed as you are, you know? Now, I know a lot of people going to say what they got to do with the story because it's the truth. A lot of people that be spewing that nonsense on 
online and shit, they don't even like the lives they're living. That's why they spew the shit they say online. That's why when I see hotels with the, can we talk about this? Or when I see, like, political shit that be politically incorrect, it's because people are, they have no lives. They're probably depressed in their lives and they're just spewing bullshit, you know? So, I have to play that song sometimes to remind myself, lock the fuck out. Like, you, you get mad, you get depressed, you're getting angry for no fucking reason. Log out. Give it up. These people are probably doing the same shit you're doing. Log out. But that's my number four. Let's go to number three. All right, number three. Black on both sides. Most deaf, Umi says. <laughs> I noticed on um, my first two, I wasn't very detailed. There's more to it. I don't. I just didn't want to go super detailed in those. Umi says I'm probably going to go in depth. Um, Umi says it's a song that since I was a kid, every time I hear it, I get tears in my fucking eyes. Like. The song is that beautiful, and I always knew the message to the song, you know? And it's crazy today that anytime... So let me explain something real quick. And I don't know if it's a cultural thing, but in my family, anytime death happens, there are certain songs that are played. So one of them, are, one of them is It's Been Too Long by Aaliyah. I hate that song with a fucking passion. You know what I'm saying? Because of the things that happen behind it. Umi says, for me, it's that song because anytime something happens that's a death, Umi says plays like immediately. Like, somebody could be playing it. I can hear it. I could just go on Spotify and randomly start it. That song connects with me. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Umi... I believe means grandmother. It might be mama, but I believe it's grandmother. But it's saying, you know, his loved ones telling him, you know, keep shining your light, keep doing what you doing so somebody can see it. You know what I'm saying? And when I hear that song, I think of all the lost ones, the loved ones I've lost over the past couple of years, especially currently. Um, The next two, I'll probably go more in depth with it, but just hearing that song and it's like a chant of people that pat past telling you like yo keep you know i know you down i know you feel like shit i know you are hurt right now but you know keep shining your light keep doing what you're doing because it's all gonna pay off and the world is gonna see it eventually you know what i'm saying it's been plenty of times i just want to delete this youtube page already <laughs> you know what i'm saying like when I look and there's only 44 subs, I'm like, damn, this shit ain't budging for the month. And I'm like, man, I'm going to delete the page. But I know I always hear this song. Like, the song will kick on like it's a spirit. Like, listen to this. And it's crazy. But, um, yeah, that song really got some emotional, sentimental things to me. Especially if I go into deep thought because I'm a visualist. Like, when I see things, I might not can draw it. I might not can see it. Sing it, but I can describe the whole picture. Which, yet again, when we talk about another song later on, I will describe what I've been going through. But uh, let's move on to number two. Number two is going to be shocking because people know how much I love this artist. I believe he is the artist of our generation. And that's going to be For Sale by Kendrick Lamar on To Pimp a Butterfly. You know, a lot of people are probably thinking, all right, all right ain't even in my top five. At least for emotional attachment. It's not in my top five. It's one of his best songs, but... All right, so... For Sale. For Sale is basically a conversation that Kendrick Lamar has with the devil. You know? Lucy, Lucifer. He describes basically her as a female at this point. Basically about selling his soul to get a record contract. Um, Why this song means so much to me? Um... Think about, and this is the way I looked at it. Would you sell your soul to get everything you wanted? Like, answer that question. Would you sell your soul to get everything you want? And like I said, I'm a visualist. I can visualize any picture. And I've, it's been plenty of times in my life where I felt like I did this and it was selling my soul. You know what I'm saying? Um... For instance, a lot of people, <coughs> sorry, 
a lot of my um, military friends aren't going to like this, but I felt like when I saw one moment, I'm sorry, but when I signed the contract for two years, I literally felt like I sold my soul to the devil. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't used to doing what people wanted me to do. I used to doing everything my way and fuck it. And now I'm in a predicament where I can't do things my way. So I felt like I sold my soul to listen to people that I really didn't want to listen to. You know what I'm saying? Um, to protect people that, honestly, I felt sometimes probably wouldn't have my back. And that was before To Pimp a Butterfly came out. To Pimp a Butterfly came out like two years while I was in the military. And I listened to that album like five times in a row the day it came out. And I listened to that song specifically eight times because it was like, he wasn't really, in my opinion, he wasn't really saying I'm selling my soul. He was questioning it. Is it, will it all be worth it? You know what I'm saying? And that's how I felt because the song, if you, if anybody really knows the album, it dives into depression. You know what I'm saying? And that's, in my, in my opinion, when I was in the military, before I met my ex, before my, me and my friends got really cool in the military, I felt like I was a depressed ass soul. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know if it was worth it. So I felt the way I felt was I sold my soul for nothing. When that wasn't the case, I just wasn't in a play. I wasn't in the right mind state, you know, and that's really why it's really more sentimental to me than anything, because I feel as though if I would have heard that song when I first got in the military, if I would have listened to the message, got the message straight up and then looked at my situation, I, I think my life would be totally different right now. I think I'd probably still be in the military. Nah, I wouldn't be in the military right now. I probably wouldn't be. I had a whole tumor. But I think a lot of situations that happened afterwards wouldn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's not no knock on anybody. I don't I don't mind the way my life changed because in my opinion, me coming back home, me leaving the military, everything that happened in Virginia, me coming back to Detroit, me living with my parents and getting tired of that shit, and now to the point me getting my ass back in school, having my own place. I feel as though I would do it all over again, you know? I felt like that was myself. I felt like that was my soul putting itself up for sale. You get what I'm saying? For sale at this point where it it had to go through all that bullshit. It had to feel as though I sold out. It had to feel as though, you no, know, I lost out on opportunity on love. I had to lose everything, feel like a failure to come home and rebuild myself up to the person I am today. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I love that song so dearly. That's why when I listen to that song, I go back and I just reminisce, you know? But let's get to this number one. All right. My number one, I'm probably going to take a snippet of it and put it on the outro, my favorite part of it, and I'm going to explain why it's my favorite part. This is where you get more of a visual. You're you're about to see when I talk about I'm visual. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, my number one, we going back to Saba, Heaven All Around Me on this Care For Me album. Um, Heaven All Around Me didn't impact my life until I understood the perspective in which he told it. So, uh, Care For Me is it's a top five album, in my opinion. It's a top five album of the decade. If y'all guys want, I'll rank albums. I'll get my top five of the decade. But it is, in my opinion, number three. I say my number three favorite album of the, the decade, of the past decade. Why is this song so impactful? Um, There's two songs. It could have tied with it. My honorable mention will be Prom, Prom King because it leads into heaven all around me. Uh, essentially, what happens is Saba tells the story of his cousin, how they became close, how everything was supposed to, they were supposed to basically be in the music business together. And Walter ends up getting killed. You know, Saba goes looking for him, finds him, sees his body coat. Now, this leads to heaven all around me. Heaven all around me is told from Walter's perspective, being a spirit. Now, Nappy, why is that so impactful? Um, I'm going to talk about this story, and this is the last time I'll talk about it. 
And that's for reasons of I don't like talking about this story because I honestly have not coped with it. People think I have, but I haven't. Um, my godmother and my cousin were murdered a week before my birthday last year. No. Um, unfortunately, my little cousin Lisa was shot in the head. My godmama was shot in the back. My godbrother found her dead laying in the um, dead laying in the driveway. You know, and I still remember getting that call. You know, I still remember getting that call saying my godmama was killed. That is the hardest to anybody that lost a family member to Zen Typhoon. I know you lost, you know, your stepfather. Trust me, you have my condolences because I know exactly how it feels to lose a loved one. You know what I'm saying? Um, I often wonder because there's a line he says, he said, yelling at my mama like, we say, yelling at my mama like, I know you hear me. Like when he said that, and I went back and understood, like, like we can't hear spirits, you know. Spirits have ways of talking to us, but we can't hear them. So I always contemplated, like, I wonder if when that situation happened, was she yelling at my brother trying to get him to hear her, and he couldn't hear her, you know. I wonder right now if they're, like, looking behind me, like, talking to me. And at the end, um... The way the song is presented, especially at the end, it makes you, the whole song makes you think from the beat and everything. But the piece that makes me like love the song the most is the very end because it has like, it has like two, three people humming. And I visualized like that's him actually leaving this earth saying goodbye. And that's the angels singing to him as he's walking through the gates. You know what I'm saying? Like, the whole graffiti thing that I was talking about, I visualized, like, just my godmother and my cousin walking through, you know? And then it's like four or five angels singing with God just sitting at the gate welcoming them. And I'm not very, I'm not religious at all. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe in Jesus Christ. I will say that uh, on this channel. So if you are a Christian, I, I don't believe in Jesus Christ, but I do believe in spirits and I do believe that there is a God, you know what I'm saying? So I believe that the spirits are sitting there singing as people walk into the pearly gates every day, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it like that song really, it, it's a hard song for me to listen through the whole way. I know this one is kind of a longer, more detailed because this is, Truly like that song that has the most attachment to me when it comes to things because of the perspective that is told in, you know. But um, that's the end of the video, you know. <laughs> I don't want to get emotional. I, I know y'all probably kind of peeped it. I started getting emotional. I had to man the fuck up. But I want you guys to uh, leave a comment of a song that you guys listen to when you guys are down or you feel as though you need something to boost you up. You know, it could be anything. It could be fucking tatted up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, like, share, subscribe. I'll try to do a Detroit Become Human because the last one is blowing the fuck up for my channel. It has like 40-something views. That shit crazy. But love you guys. Um, yeah, peace. Dude.